All right, everyone, welcome back. Today, this week's video, we're gonna start off with a session on how to create a backdoor that evades most antivirus. It'll be a simple PowerShell backdoor. We're gonna do it in a way that you can slip it across uh, intrusion detection systems, across networks and other things, and use it to actually give yourself backdoor access to whatever box you happen to get it on. This will be a two part series. So the next video will actually, I'll show you how to use, we'll just use SQL injection as an example of how we would deliver this if we didn't have access to the box. So this week you get two fours. I'm gonna do two videos this week instead of my normal one. That's because I missed last week. Uh, we were, I had some really busy week with some stuff going on. So I'm gonna give you two this week and the first one will be this one. So let's look at what we'll be doing. What we're creating is a backdoor that will get by most filters, AV and host-based intrusion detection or prevention because it will essentially be just a text file in the beginning. How do I use it in penetration testing? Well, when I'm doing SQL injection and I need to drop a backdoor, when I'm doing segmentation testing, for example, and I need to see if the filters between a card data environment and a non-card data environment are working and not allowing certain types of uh, traffic to across it. I might use this as a backdoor sometimes to see if I can get it across. Pretty much anytime I need a backdoor, this technique can be used to actually do that. Now we'll get into some more advanced uh, ways to do, you know, evade, like we'll write the binary out to, you know, um, assembly and manipulate some of the assembly instructions and then recompile it. And that's an even you know, more advanced way to do it. But we're gonna look at something very basic today that everyone can actually do. So what will we be using? We'll be using Kali, which is the most popular penetration testing Linux distribution. We'll also be using PowerShell, which is Windows scripting language that was kind of the answer to Bash. And we will uh, use a tool called Unicorn, which is a Python script written by uh, Dave Kennedy, who also wrote the Social Engineers Toolkit for us. All right. So those are the three things that we will primarily uh, be using, you know, to get this done. So let's go ahead and do it. All right. So first thing we're going to do is I'm right here on my Cali. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring down Unicorn so that um, we can utilize it. And you can follow this step by step from your own Cali console here if you've got it. All right, so again, written by Dave Kennedy and Trusted Sec. So we're just gonna bring Unicorn down, put in my password. All right, so we got it. Now we're going to actually change to the Unicorn directory. Okay, then from there, I'm going to run Unicorn and have it generate for me the files and things that I need. Now, you're gonna need to know your IP address. For example, um, mine is 172.16.78.194. So I will need to put that in my, when I call the, the Unicorn script here. All right, so now I will use Unicorn. Uh, it's, again, it's just a Python script. And essentially what we need to do is tell it um, to create a backdoor for us. And we're gonna basically tell it to do it in um, in the form of interpreter. So let's give it that path. All right. When then we have to give it our machine's IP here, wherever you want it to come back to. Now, if you were doing this like on an AWS server, you would put in, of course, the public uh, Amazon or Microsoft Azure server's IP address. So we run that. And keep in mind, this might take a couple of minutes depending on the speed of your Kali VM and all that, all right? So you can see it says it successfully created mine. And it is a PowerShell script that it creates and it names it just PowerShell attack.txt. So now let's go ahead and look in the directory. We can see that the PowerShell attack file is there. That is the actual malicious backdoor right there. And that's what we would need to get over to the victim. All right, now again, in another video, the one that I'll release tomorrow, 
I will actually show you how to do this with, I will just use SQL injection to deliver it. But today we're just gonna deliver it manually just so that you can see that the uh, back door actually works. Now, if you wanted to look at it, you know, we could definitely view it and see that it's just a base 64 encoded uh, PowerShell script is what it ends up being. All right, so now we need to then run Metasploit and give it the unicorn resource file that was created. So um, if you look in this directory, there's also a unicorn.rc file. What that is, is it tells Metasploit which settings to set when you run it. So this just keeps us from manually having to put these settings in there that matches the PowerShell backdoor that we created. So it's automatically building it with those requirements. Notice the IP is already in there. Notice the right ports there. So it set that up for us and now it's waiting on that port. So let's go ahead and get the binary over to another machine here. All right, so let's just open this. And I'm just gonna use TFTP again because we're just getting it set up here. Doing a proof of concept, if you will. So let's create a little TFTP server. And then I'm going to copy um, that file, the PowerShell attack file over to my TFTP directory. All right, so we need permissions for that. So let's go ahead and sudo. All right, so now if we look in our TFTP directory, you'll see that the PowerShell attack file is there. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the victim machine now. I'm gonna bring over the PowerShell file. And remember, tomorrow's video will be showing how I would get this there via SQL injection. But today we're just copying it over so that we can prove that the file actually works. So it's PowerShell attack.txt. So we got it over. Now it is a PowerShell script, so Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm simply going to rename it to just um, attack.ps1. That'll be good enough. All right, now I'm going to run PowerShell and then I'm going to point to that file. Now, when you want to run the PowerShell script, if you want to just run it directly, you will need to do the dot backslash in front of it. So over here, we got nothing going on. We just got our listener. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and run this by hitting enter. All right, and then when we run it, what you see happening is you can clearly see that it came over and it gave us a couple of interpreter sessions there. All right, and that's because I ran it twice. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to the first session. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to tomorrow's video where we, we will look at how to get the script over using just regular old vanilla SQL injection.